And hello there! I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to another edition of Funky Monkey at the Movies! And with me, as seemingly less than ever, but he's with me today, it's my nameless producer! Hello! Yay! But tonight's episode is all about the man, the myth, the legend that is Deadpool 2. And <laughs> it's certainly fun. And it's certainly gruesome. It's enough yucks and enough gore to keep all the fans satisfied. And all this for a 15 rating? What are the BBFC thinking? But hey, let's go straight to the nameless producer for his thoughts. Yeah, um, I mean, not on the film, but it seems like uh, in terms of ratings, you can basically do anything in terms of like swearing and violence and so on, and make sexual references, and it gets a 15 rating, but like if you stick some boobs in it, then it gets put on an 18 rating, which just seems stupid. It's like... You know, you can do the worst things in the world, and you get a lower rating. But stick some nudity in it, and then suddenly it's an 18 rated film. Well, yeah. It does seem like the tiniest hint of female nudity, female full frontal nudity, can um, bump up the rating to a full 18. And that's not cool. In terms of the films, I don't know, I, I don't think... Uh, I did enjoy it. But I don't think I enjoyed it as much as the first one because it was like he wasn't trying as hard. It's like he'd already won everyone over, so maybe he wasn't trying as hard, or maybe it was because there were more people in it or something. Maybe I don't know. I thought the humour was—I don't know—it kind of happened in clumps, whereas I thought it was more spread out in Deadpool One. Yeah. I mean, there were some hilarious parts. Well, they weren't spread out so much. Bit of a spoiler here, but Cable. Here's a guy, and he's come back from the future to stop a bad thing from happening, which was essentially Days of Future Past again. Well, you know, that kind of thing happens a lot in the X-Men. I mean, they had Kitty Pryde travel back in time, and they had Rachel Summers, Grey, whatever the hell her name is travel back in time, and they had Bishop travel back in time, and Cable travel back in time. Pretty much everyone travels back in time. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much everyone travels back in time in the X-Men comics. It's crazy. But to start with, his whole reason for coming back by the end of the movie is gone. But now he's decided he's going to stick around in the past to make sure that other bad things don't happen. Maybe the next one will be Cable and Deadpool. Or, you know, X-Force. I quite like the bit where, like, all the X-Men cameoed in it, but, like, for two seconds, and then they shut the door so you couldn't see them anymore. And the hugging scene at the end. Yeah. Like, yeah, let's bring it together, pelvis to pelvis, tip to tip. And then he's like, is that, that a knife in my d That's a knife in your d That's a knife in your d Yeah. But yeah, and I'm. They were rude about Canada as well. You shut your <laughs> damn mouth about Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And of course, I have to take issue with that one scene from the mid credits because um, <clears throat> I liked Green Lantern. You yeah. can uh, go back and take a look. I'll probably, I'll try and master the art of YouTube cards. You can probably click the eye on the uh, top corner, and that'll be there. It was mediocre. Well, it was maybe a bit above mediocre, but it wasn't that good. I mean, in a lot of ways, it was kind of like the way Fantastic Four 2 ended, with some big swirly giant cloud monster that he had to beat up, and he did, the end. Yeah. yeah. This wasn't that good. Oh, maybe, maybe. They could have done more with it, I think. Maybe in the new DC Extended Universe, they will. Yeah, maybe. But that is to come. Let's get back to the now and uh, the movie at hand. Yeah. Let's go blow by blow through the film. So, some of the fight scenes in it were quite good. Yeah. With the things like, I think it was trying too hard with slow motion and things. 
And it didn't, Possibly they were parodying that kind of thing, the overuse of slow motion. I know you had some slow motion in the first film, but it's like, I thought the fight scenes were better choreographed. Like the opening in the first film, where you had the whole car chase kind of thing, uh-huh. and then there was the whole big fight with the bullets and the bullet countdown. Well, I suppose it's like Alan Moore says. The less money you have, the more imagination you have to use. Yeah. Let's see the new characters. Well, the kid was kind of irritating. I suppose he was supposed to be funny, but he was kind of irritating. Yeah. X-Force didn't really last long enough to um, comment on. Absolute waste. Yeah. I mean, come on, you've got Shatterstar. Yeah, I didn't even know who Shatterstar was. Is he, like... Somehow related to or to do with long shot. Possibly. Yeah, I mean, they just introduced this character and it's like, hey, he's an alien. He comes from another planet. Let's not touch on that at all. No time. Juggernaut was better than the last time we saw Juggernaut in a film. Oh, well, I didn't touch on he- exactly how he got his powers. Yeah, it's like, please stop casting him as a mutant. He's not a mutant. He's mystically inclined. Yeah. Just sell it back to Marvel. Yeah. You know? You can have a Benedict Cumberbatch. Have something to do with it. Yeah, he can have something to do with it, because, you know... He's always referencing Cytorak. Cytorak, yeah. Mystic bands. There's mystic bands, yeah. And the Crimson Gen that makes uh, Juggernaut unstoppable. So that's just kind of ironic that he's got this spell called the Mystic Bands of Cytorak, which, like, hold people in place in the immovable and whatever. And yet the avatar of Cytorak, which is Juggernaut, is, like, unstoppable. He's supposed to be his thing. And, of course, the music. We usually mention the music for this stuff, but, you know. It didn't really impact on me, the music, but it was neither terrible nor good, particularly. Ah, uh, very few films these days have noticeable music. I prefer the songs from the first. Although I did love that they had a Celine Dion. They, they had Celine Dion do a, a song, and then they had uh, the Bond opening parody to it. Yeah, that was pretty good. I mean, the special effects were functional, but not amazing. But then he didn't really rely on the special effects, so there was nothing you could really say about it, I suppose. I mean, Colossus was still pretty much the same as it was in the other film. Might have been a little bit better. Maybe. Because we did see a little more of him. Yeah. Massive CGI fight! (laughs) Yeah. Spoiler, that's a thing that happens. Colossus versus Juggernaut. Yeah. Although, the uh, mid-credits scenes. The pool goes through some moments in time and corrects the course of history. Corrects in air quotes including the moment in uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine where he takes out what is supposed to have happened to him in the 80s. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think the whole when Cable shooting at him and he's swirling the swords around, he's like a callback to that because he did that and he was supposed to be completely safe, only this time he wasn't. Yeah. Possibly a little bit of a parody. Because, you know, uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine did kind of suck. Uh, I think a lot of the hate for X-Men Origins Wolverine came from the fact that a lot of people kind of just saw that leaked version, which didn't have the special effects in it properly, so everyone was going, wow, this looks terrible, but that serves them right for watching a pirate version of the film. Although the special effects version wasn't, I mean, it wasn't an amazing film, but it wasn't as bad as people make out. Well, the main thing about X-Men Origins Wolverine, like I say in the, uh, well, as the multi-sided mutant Funky M says in the uh, Mutant Thon episode pertaining to it, I'll probably try and get that link there, the entire reason for the movie, the origin of Wolverine, uh-huh. which is like a whole six-issue story detailing who Wolverine really is, And that's all, like, glossed over before the opening titles have even rolled. Then you have a century of stuff, a reheated revenge tale for a woman who isn't even dead. Yeah. This changes nothing? No, no, just, just no, no. 
It was just telling the story, really, about how he got metal on his bones. Yeah. And I mean, if anything, it kind of interfered with the following X Men films because there you've got Sabretooth, who supposedly was his brother, or grew up with his brother, and they had all that big history of the past before. And then in the next X Men film, or in, you know, X Men 1, they didn't even recognise each other, kind of thing. Which obviously, we know Wolverine had lost his memory, but. I don't think Sabretooth had. And Sabretooth has become more feral for some reason, so it just kind of interfered with that. I think with the Wolverine films, it's best just to take each one and just treat it as a separate film. So I go X Men Origins Wolverine is just a standalone film, and then the other Wolverine, which was a bit terrible in Japan, was a its own standalone film. I like that film. movie. No, uh, I didn't. Maybe I should watch it again. Maybe. I just I didn't like it the first time I watched it. And Logan was, is its own story again. Uh, and that's coming up this autumn on uh, two very special New Mutant Fun episodes. But for now, let's uh, get some final thoughts for Deadpool 2. It is worth watching, but I don't think it was as edgy and innovative as the first one. Alright, certainly not a family film, despite uh, Deadpool's voiceover narration, but if you like the first one, then definitely give this one a go. So, let's put it on the ladder! So, what have we seen? We've got Black Panther, Uh Avengers Infinity War, Uh and this. Right, so, I'm gonna go Avengers... Deadpool 2 and Black Panther. Ooh! Well, that's uh, certainly something. I'm gonna go completely the opposite. I'm gonna go uh, Black Panther, Deadpool 2 in the middle, and Avengers Infinity War at the bottom. Because it left me short of breath by the end of it. Well, wasn't that a good thing? Uh, well, it is half a movie. Yeah, there is that. I don't know. I just had mixed feelings about the political message and overhype of Black Panther, which for me kind of drags it down the ratings. I just saw a lovely movie about a superhero. But we won't dwell on it. We shall instead bring this podcast to a close. So then, this has been Funky Monkey and his nameless producer. All the e-begging links will be in the description below. And don't forget that we're on Minds.com. Exactly. And thank you for listening. And we'll see you at the movies. Bye.